thick and chewy. During that dramatic confrontation between Kendall and Shiv, in which the former practically begged his sister to break the 6 to 6 vote and allow him to take over Waystar, Shiv said something that really twisted the knife. Do you remember? You can't be CEO. You can't, because you killed someone. That should remind you of two things. The gut-wrenching and heart-stopping moments of the season one finale where Kendall accidentally gets one of the waiters serving his family's event killed in a drug-related car accident. Exactly one season later, during the season two finale, it was Logan who told Kendall he'd never be good enough as CEO because he's not a killer. You have to be a killer. Logan said, what could you possibly kill that you love so much? It would make the sun rise again. In the context of this episode, Logan leads Kendall to believe he's being bestowed the royal crown of the Waystar Empire. But in reality, it's Logan who's killing what he loved by having Kendall take the fall. So this killer word is thrown around a lot since the end of season one, and it ultimately represents Kendall's downfall in more than one way. It was also sort of an overarching theme of the season four finale. Shiv and Roman are ruthless, and Kendall remains the emotional anchor. Even cousin Greg has turned sour, but in the end, it was Kendall's downfall. Every season of Succession has a slightly altered version of that iconic opening title sequence, showing us different cryptic hints as to what is going to transpire in that season through archived footage of family outings. In other words, don't click that skip intro button. One thing we saw in the season four's opening is the headline, all your favorite Waystar movies and TV in one place on the Stargo mobile app, a video that seems to be buffering. It's worth noting that many viewers liken this to a playful jab at the HBO Max app's lackluster performance. It also hinted at the fate of Waystar. Fans speculated that the moniker Stargo implied a potential collaboration between Waystar Royco and Gojo, the technology company owned by Lucas Matson, played by Alexander Skarsgård, and that ultimately turned out to be heartbreakingly true, and a bit of an understatement. Yes, Matson's company ended up acquiring Waystar, and shockingly, Tom ended up as CEO of Waystar Royco. Not the ending I anticipated, but it was satisfying, if not bittersweet, and a little devastating, and I really didn't hate it. There was also another bit of foreshadowing in the title sequence worth mentioning, the kid in the pedal car. Could this be a cryptic metaphor of that fateful crash that caused Kendall's life to spiral in a hauntingly childlike way? It was this moment that seemed to be the final nail in the coffin for Kendall. You know what they say about a gun in the first act, or in this case, a dead waiter in the first season. Sorry. In season one of Succession, Tom and Shiv get hitched, and what follows is a marriage full of debauchery and complications. I, I just love saying the word wife. <laughs> wife. Yeah. Shiv telling Tom, I love you, but I don't love you, is obviously the clearest way to sum up this tumultuous thing they have going on. Even Logan stepped in and voiced his biting take on their relationship, telling Shiv that Tom is beneath her and that she's only with him because she doesn't want to be betrayed. And that proves to be true as Shiv walks all over him, showing that she wears the pants in their relationship. In other words, Tom is the exact opposite of Logan, and Sigmund Freud just rolled in his grave. But the gaslighting and manipulation at the hands of Shiv came to an ironic conclusion when her submissive Tom ended up being the CEO of the company she once sought power over. Over. Their final moment of screen time together was heartbreaking. After four seasons of Tom plucking flower petals, the two of them sit in the backseat of a car with Tom extending his hand, inviting Shiv to hold his, and she sort of hover hands it. Neither smile, nor do they make a peep. I think it's that small little gesture that sums up the disconnect between the two of them throughout the show's four seasons. Tom offers his hand and Shiv can't give it her all. It's left painfully clear that this toxic relationship is never ending. Okay, yeah, right, I know, yeah, I get it. Huh even after viewers were previously given a small glimmer of hope that things would work out. However, I can't help but to point out Tom's habit of leaving his wedding ring off during certain moments in season four. For example, when Tom is in the general vicinity of Naomi Pierce, board member of Pierce Global Media and former love interest of Kendall, Tom coincidentally does not have his wedding ring on, implying some sort of secret spicy rendezvous. But in that same episode, when he's alone, he is wearing it. I can only speculate if this is because he truly loves Shiv. Speaking of, with the revelation of Tom being named CEO, Shiv didn't take the news well. Upon hearing the news, Shiv approached both of her brothers and, in that moment, was more of a Roy than supportive wife. But what I and many other Succession fans failed to notice is that there was something very off about one of the promotional posters. With all the characters standing with their backs turned against the reflective glass windows of a skyscraper, all the reflections seemed lined up, save for Shiv and Tom, who seemed to be standing behind each other and somehow on opposite sides of the screen, also eyeing each other. But with Shiv double-crossing her brother by not giving him the winning vote, she ensured Tom's victory and also kind of her own. With Tom in charge and Shiv being, well, a Roy, she will be able to still have some control over Waystar from the shadows, a sort of eminence grise position. 
As I stated before, the opening credit sequence of Succession features some cryptic clues as to where the season is going, but the promotional posters are no different. In fact, one of the posters for the final season shows the reflection of an airplane in a skyscraper. For those of you who are watching this because you, hopefully, have seen season 4, you know that Roy family patriarch and billionaire mogul and all-around loud and scary guy Logan, played by the brilliant and equally loud and scary Brian Cox, dies in season 4's third episode. Not only that, but he dies in the most strangely appropriate way for someone as rich and legendary as Logan Roy can. In an airplane, thousands of feet above the rest of the world. It stands to reason that this little piece of imagery has a lot to do with the fall of one such legend. At the very least, we knew this airplane would be significant in some way. This show doesn't show us anything we aren't supposed to be seeing, as any good show does. And if we happen to miss the poster, you might have noticed that there was something ominous about Connor's wedding in the teaser of that episode. You know how on television the weather is always picture perfect and sunny? That, however, didn't seem to apply to this episode. The production chose a cloudy sky, which cast a melancholy shade over the entire occasion. It seems as though the weather was trying to warn us that this wouldn't be their most joyful day ever. Wow, were they ever right. The already ominous mood took on a deeper and more uncertain turn with Logan's untimely death. While it's not as intense as Game of Thrones' Red Wedding, this Grey Wedding might just go down in TV history all the same. I mean, it only makes sense that his death would happen sometime during Season 4, but for it to happen so early definitely caught me and many of the other fans off guard, although his death was guaranteed nonetheless. After all, the series kicked off just before Logan suffered a stroke, sending the siblings into a cold war for the seat at the throne of Waystar, so we knew that some heart-related demise was inevitable. It was shocking, regardless, even if we knew it was going to happen. Suffice it to say, Succession's attention to detail is incredible. Again, on the topic of posters providing important foreshadowing for what would transpire in Season 4, we should have guessed what Shiv's ultimate role in the end was going to be. Did you even think to pay attention to the wardrobe in the posters? You can see the characters looking dapper in their designer suits, and each character's attire acts as a thinly veiled hint about their responsibilities we saw play out in this season. Logan Roy, the domineering father, is positioned smack in the middle of the group. He exudes authority and control over the family business while rocking a sharp suit and expertly tied tie. Greg and Tom, who also happen to be wearing matching ties, stand on opposite sides of him. It's almost like a symbolic reference to how they recently worked together to betray the rest of the family in the stunning season finale. As they stand side by side, Tom and Greg's bond is clear, demonstrating their continued collaboration in the dynamic world of the Roy family. Let's now discuss Shiv. In a black turtleneck, she stands out from the rest of the family, making a statement as she does. Her choice of clothing shows that she may feel alienated from the rest of the family. She feels left out by both factions and seem to struggle to find her place. It's a visual representation of the obstacles she must overcome. I don't think it's a stretch to say that the symbolism of their attire stays pretty consistent throughout the season. The hierarchy was set and poor Shiv felt left out, her goals overshadowed by those of her brothers. It also kind of emphasizes how differently treated she is from her male co-workers throughout the entire season. Now let's get back to Roman for a moment. He's always craved his father's affection and respect, despite all of his obvious betrayals. It's interesting to see that Roman began to dress like Logan. Roman wears a blue knit cardigan in his encounter with Lucas that is eerily similar to the one Logan wore in season one, as seen in the opening credits. It's literally Roman's devotion for his father on display. Roman may appear to toe the line between opposing camps, but as the series progresses, it's very clear that he has always been a daddy's boy. That said, Roman is not a carbon copy of his father. He is an individual with his own challenges. Roman's outburst in episode 5, when Lucas calls Logan a prick, indicates the depth of his inner agony. The man declares, I'm dead. It's over for me. It's a touching moment that exposes Roman's reality. He always cared more about Logan as his father than about Logan as a successful businessman. Roman feels completely lost without his father there to guide him, test him, and make fun of him. The poignant revelation gives a clear picture of the complex layers that make up Logan and Roman's father-son relationship. It is a story about yearning, admiration, and the fight for identity and acceptance. There were a few indications that Season 1's C-Story antagonist would come back to haunt the Roy family after his unsuccessful attempt at taking down Kendall. At the beginning of Season 2, however, we saw that his company shut down. What's weird about this is that Lawrence Yee's name remained in the opening credits of the show. As I talked about in this video, the showrunners have impeccable attention to detail, even in their opening credit sequence which switches things up every season. He wasn't gone though, and Season 4 very, very subtly confirmed that in a blink and you'll miss it sort of moment. Yes, Lawrence returned to the scene to exact revenge, and even though we didn't see it happened on screen, he revealed a huge secret during his interview for the CEO post at Waystar. It was evidence that Matson was turning against Shiv. Imagine that. But this episode contains a few more interesting callbacks as well. Let's not forget how Telus, the investment banker, warned the brothers and sisters that a power-sharing trio would be perceived as a cop-out at the Fudge Factory. That phrase was a clear reference to the more obscene but iconic Valter headline from season one that I just can't say on this channel. It seems as though Lawrence's presence is still with them, bringing back those priceless memories from the past. The writers did an amazing job of tying these threads together into the conclusion. It gives the narrative complexity and layers and serves as a reminder of the complicated web these individuals are caught in. The show is so immensely compelling because of all those little things. Don't even try to deny it. 
At the risk of sounding like a broken record, there were some interesting costume designs that provided subtle insight to the characters adorning the attire. However, this one deserves a spot on this list on its own because there's a lot to digest here. Costume designer Michelle Matland confirmed that there's more to Logan's funeral scene than what immediately meets the eyes. It's really mind-blowing how subtly Matland offered a hint to find his ex-girlfriends among those attending the burial. She adorned many of the women with emerald-colored jewelry. Logan usually showered his girlfriends with emerald gifts during his amorous adventures, especially around holidays like Valentine's Day. So at some point in their lives, every one of these women possessed an emerald object that served as a reminder of Logan's love for them. What a way to make a lasting impression. All the women seated in the front pew, including Logan's wife Marsha, and even his current mistress Carrie, are sporting green jewelry, if you pay close attention. Even Lady Caroline Collingwood, Logan's ex-wife, wore a large emerald brooch that rivaled the Eiffel Tower. The level of detail is crazy. It's unfortunate that Waystar's close friends Jerry and Carolina aren't encrusted in emeralds. With smaller gold necklaces and earrings, they are keeping it understated. But hey, at least they are still included in the intriguing plot. According to Matland, these subtle hints not only give Logan's character more nuance, but they also aid in developing the backstories of the other succession players. Honestly, out of all the Easter eggs in season four, I have to say that this one might take the cake. It's a lovely, heartbreaking, and humorous detail that really captures the heart and soul of the show. During Shiv's eulogy, she mentions how Logan kept them outside, but he kept everyone outside. When he let you in, when the sun shone, it was warm. Yeah, it was warm in the light. In season two, Logan offers Shiv the position of CEO and she understandably can't believe it. So Logan says, this is real, remember this. This slant of light, remember this, this is it. The light they were referring to is really more about Logan's control over his children. Logan would often use his twisted versions of love and affection or light to manipulate his children. The episode overall had a very darkly humorous and bitter tone beneath its tragic surface. For example, and speaking of being left out of the light, Shiv does an impression of her father as she recounts a story of him yelling at them to keep quiet. Did you notice Connor and Kendall's subtle glance at Roman? It's no secret that the loudmouthed Roman took the brunt of his father's abuse in his childhood, and even in his adulthood, as we saw in season two when Logan physically slapped him. If you needed a summary of the kid's relationship with their father, look no further than Shiv's Emmy-worthy eulogy speech. Throughout the series, there's a continuing motif surrounding Kendall and his connection to water. In one episode, we see him saying to just be water. Will he come in? He's not coming in, right? You know what? Just be water, my friend. And the water theme continues throughout all of Succession. Obviously, we see in episode one, Kendall barely escaping with his life after being submerged into a body of water, killing a waiter and altering the trajectory of Kendall's entire life, which is obviously true for his character as he struggles with addiction, guilt, and being the kind of leader he needs to be while completely reinventing himself outside of what people expect from him. What we get is a series of futile efforts to do exactly that, along with images of Kendall submerged in water. As he strives to be like water, we mostly see him submerged in some of his lowest moments, but one of them in particular sort of stands out. In the season four episode, And We Got Ours, we once again see Kendall submerging himself, this time in the ocean after drawing a one in the sand, referencing his deceased father's words to him following the life-altering car accident in season one. Yes, when Logan calls Kendall his number one boy. You're my boy. You're my number one boy. Instead of Kendall being at a new all-time low, we see this scene as more of a rebirth. For a brief moment, his demons don't drag him down. He's able to float. Damn, this show is good. I mean, come on. So, we say goodbye to the Roys and one of the most detail-oriented shows in recent memories. It was unique in that it was just as laugh-out-loud funny as it was gripping and oftentimes heartbreaking. You know this is a show that will be picked apart and analyzed long after this video is posted 